Here we are at Gundy Aboriginal Caving Place in Lightning Ridge and we're going to be meeting with June and Roy Barker and they run the um, Aboriginal Caving Place and they're going to tell us a, a little bit about their culture. Now if your dad mines, what does he find? <coughs> yes? Opals. Opals, of course. See the pretty opals are down in under the ground and the old Aborigine said to us, see that colour on those pretty stones came from the colour of little Pala Pala's wings way back in the dreaming. That's the story of the first opals. I heard that last time. Yeah, you once. heard that before, eh? <laughs> I was born in the Yorta Yorta, that's down on the Murray River. Yeah. Yeah, that was my mother's country and my father of the Wiradjuri. But I grew up all my life with the Nyimba people. That's in the Brewarra, yeah. as we said on the Barwon Darling River. And you were in the mission? Yeah, on the mission there. Oh, right. Yeah. So you, because you were sort of, uh, you grew up in the mission and you sort of mixed with the people from different nations? Oh, yes, yeah. You had a good yeah. relationship with all around this area. Yeah. Like Walgut, Burke, Bree, Collie, Gadooga. Yeah. We're all the one, you know. Mm. What does Gundi mean? Uh, it's a shelter, a house. All right. Uh, same as a gunya. You've heard of a gunya? No. A mai mai? No. These are all Aboriginal words. Yeah. Whirly. A whirly, that you know. Depending yeah. on, on what nation you're, you're in, you know. But they all mean the same. Mm. A shelter. Yeah. And a lot of them were made out of bark and everywhere you go they're different. Well, in this area, we call it a gundi. Yeah. Mm. And that's why, that's why we call that a gundi. Keeping yeah, keeping right. Right. To right. keep our Aboriginal things in there, which I'll show you there. Yeah. Mm. All the grinding stones where the Aboriginals used to grind their, their seeds to make their flour and then Nyimba is out here. Huh? And then up above that is the um, Uruwari and the Uali eye there. This is my sore arm. Yeah. Uali eye people, this is where we are now, see? With the Uali eye people. All these stones they used, the old Aboriginal people, we found them. See how sharp that one is? They all had a purpose. They used them knives. See, this one was like a sharp knife where they skin their kangaroos and cut skin their meat up. Food. Yeah, cut their food up on their face, on their forehead. There's one yeah. where there's one. Where on your one? cheeks. Right over there. Yeah, that's right. That's a special day. That looks good. Yeah, that's well. good. That's a good one. This is a book here that my dad put out here as told. Uh, to Janet Mat Matthews. She was the one that uh, taped him and uh, put this book out. And um, he, uh, they sold well, well in the States and, and in England and some of the schools here in this country too. But um, uh, she got the copyright of it and we got nothing. No. That's, yeah. yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. But, uh, we knew nothing about uh, um, copyright laws or, and all that. But uh, we're awake up to them now a bit, you yeah. know. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad book. It tells him of the life of an Australian Aboriginal from 1900 to 1972, as told by Janet Matthews, yeah. So that's his life? That's his life story. And she got copyright. She got the copyright of it. <laughs> she got the copyright of it. He's in a nameless grave in the, in the Brewarrina Mission Cemetery. Yeah, well, this is what they used to carry their food in. But this is a Northern Territory dish. Come back, you boy. And when you look at them, you'll say, oh, that's where they cut the bark off to make a dish. This year they'd put a little baby in this one. See, a little newborn baby. And it's called a Coolamon. That's a canoe tree, see? Uh, the, cano the bark was cut off that with an axe like this. With an Aboriginal stone axe. And the bark would have been a big piece of bark like that. Uncle Roy just cut that to show you that it can come off in one big piece. For you growing up as someone of mixed blood, mm. how did that make you feel? Well, I was no different than anyone else, sort of, is my feelings, but you see... Um, Did you feel sort of 
the twat, you know, you weren't sure if you were fully up Oh, no, no, no we got on well with the full blood Aborigines, yeah. you know. And I can't, you know, the, uh, in, in the town of Rewarren, it was a very biased and uh, little town. And, uh, but there was a lot of good non-Aboriginal people there too, you know, who really protected the, a lot of the Aborigines from the harsh element of, of uh, unscrupulous people that were around at that time. So we can't speak ill of those good non-Aboriginal people, and we never will. And of course then uh, the missions were set up, and uh, the tribal people in the very beginning then were pushed off those off that country onto missions. They had nowhere then for forage for food, and what happened, and the government decided to uh, uh, give them hand handouts, that's rations, just rations, flour, tea and shoe and whatever. And that, in my view, has had repercussions right down through the years, you know, that uh, Aboriginal people are so dependent on government handouts today. And I'm going to show you the little gundi now, the bark, um, <clears throat> the bark shelter. This is only a small one. They would be much bigger. And see the bark, covered in bark. And in there would have been their kangaroo skins and possum furs. They'd have a big fire burning out the front. And laying in there of a night, the mums and dads and a couple of children, they'd have really a warm bed. And see the spears. It's a fishing spear, see? Where they go along the river and see the spears. A spear the fish with a fishing spear like that. One spear I'd like to show you here. It's called a punishment spear, a death spear. See the stones are in there? They'd kill you if they plunged it into your, into your chest. And that spear was used on murderers, child abusers, anyone who hurt little children. They killed them. That's the old Aboriginal law. They'd take them away into the bush and before the sun went down and you'd never see them anymore. I'll show you this first. See, this is a branch off a tree. See how hard and rough it is, but when it's cut with a saw, Uncle Roy has to use a saw now, and that's what he cuts his uh, boomerangs out of that. The bloke said to me, he said, oh, he said, you're making all these um, Aboriginal artefacts by, with, with power tools and whatever. And I said to him, yeah, I said, that's right. But I said, I don't see you coming up in a horse and buggy. You're coming up in a flash limousine. So you got to go with the times. <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, here's the Woomera. You mentioned the hunting spear. The hunting yeah. spear goes with the... Oh, can you show them? Where's Lenny? I didn't, didn't think the way Uncle Roy showed me was you, you try and just put one end over the yeah, top yeah, thing over the top like and try that. and Watch. Yeah, watch. Watch. And then you throw it like that, then that'll come out, Oops. Yeah. and this'll stay in your hand. That's right. That's yeah. okay. I guess we could compare it to a slingshot for yeah. a long stick. Or a billiard yeah. screw or something. Yeah. 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 They'd burn that little hole there, and it's got a bit of sinew out of the kangaroo tail around there. And you show them how that goes in there, then, really. That's a little little little. It's a little throwing club. Oh, out of their tail. No, out of the tail. Oh, out of the tail. Yeah. Okay. Out of the tail of a kangaroo. This one here is a battle axe. This is a fighting club. If you got hit in the head with that, oh, that would be terrible. So the men would get out there trying to hit one another with these. And uh, that was in their tribal wars when they'd be fighting. So, so that's one group fighting against another. That's not tribe. family. Yeah. No, no, no. They had to duck before... Oh yeah, you had to duck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you better hit back. Yeah.